Hello, and welcome to another episode of Taking Flight. My name is Dr. Heather Dartes, and we are here today to talk about some really cool current collaborations between our faculty and our students, which, which is what Full Sail does so well. We starting over? Oh, <laughs> so I'm here today with some really wonderful instructors who really put a lot of energy into making it a, a, an amazing collabor collaborative uh, experience for their students, giving them lots of perspective on real world projects. And um, from a diversity, very diverse, uh, I think we're having some audio problems. Eric, you can hear me now? Okay, we're good. We're back in business. Okay, so um, today we get to talk about some of the projects that our students and our, stu and our faculty are working on. Um, and we're joined here today by Eric Miles, who is part of our Entertainment Business Master's Program. We also have Alan Gorney, part of our Film Production Master's Program. Uh, with him is Georg Hartman, who also part of our Film Production Master's Program. And here in the studio today, I have Andrew Bird, also part of Film Production Master's. So, the cool part about today is that we get to talk a lot about some film and television projects, but we have collaborative projects that are happening throughout the university all the time. Um, and I can't wait to get into some of the details of that, but before we do that, I wanna allow our guests to share a little bit about their background and their experience. So Eric, would you like to start us off and tell us a little bit about your experience before Full Sail and kind of some of the things you're doing now? Sure, how long do we have? <laughs> you have a minute, yeah. no. <laughs> That's a good um, no, I mean, in a nutshell, basically, you know, um, I started out as an actor um, and I went on a world tour and I'm from a small town in Pennsylvania. And after that, I kind of got claustrophobic living in a small town in Pennsylvania and decided to pursue my acting career uh, because I was from Pennsylvania. New York and Chicago were immediately out of the question because I did not want to deal with the cold anymore. Uh, LA was a little bit too far away and I'm kind of date myself right now because back in the early 90s, uh, Orlando was a booming town as far as production and stuff was concerned because we had these great uh, state rebates, these tax rebates back then. A lot of production was here. So I moved to Orlando, Florida and shortly thereafter got a job working at uh, Universal Studios as an actor. Went behind the scenes, started doing some directing and writing, raised some money for a film, ended up getting kind of bamboozled out of that deal, ended up having to go into a lawsuit that lasted for five years. Um, after that, um, I realized, and I technically won after that, uh, and a little bit of money came to me, but a lot of money went out. I realized, hey, who really made off in this deal? And that was the attorneys. So guess what I did next? <laughs> I pulled all my projects and I went to law school. And uh, I went to law school in my late 30s. So those of you that are pursuing your master's degrees, your bachelor's at a later age, it's never too late. Uh, trust me, I did it in the late 30s and graduated law school in my early 40s and got a job as a prosecutor first and then moved on to going into entertainment law and then found myself not liking working for a huge law firm and uh, wanted to get out of that. Saw Full Sail, had an opportunity to teach and ended up switching gears and coming here and opening up my own law firm. So I have my own uh, entertainment law firm that I still practice and I teach here at Full Sail and I also do uh, producing and directing still. So kind of a amalgamation of a lot of things in the industry. And Eric, I remember when you started here, tell me how long you've been working at Full Sail now? So I started working at Full Sail in 2015. Okay. And uh, I started out teaching uh, a class called Mastery uh, in the, it technically falls in the entertainment business master's program, but it is the only class that all mastery students have to take first. Yeah. So I was able to really meet a lot of cool people from all over the degrees. And uh, I'm still friends with a lot of them on Facebook and Instagram and stuff. And um, yeah, now I teach negotiation and deal making, which, hey, entertainment attorney, perfect fit for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I really appreciate all that you do for our students. I know you really go above and beyond to support them. So, um, Alan, Thank you get you. to go. You get to go next. Alan, tell us a little bit about your experience. Yeah, so I started uh, in high school, actually. I wrote my first screenplay. It's terrible, and I would never show anybody. Um, <laughs> but I wanted to be an actor, um, and uh, I went to acting school in New York. 
Uh, I got very lucky that within a month of being there, I got my first full-time job in the industry. So I did both at the same time. Um, after that, I booked a national tour. So I tra traveled all around the country. And when that was over, I was like, okay, there is a lot of competition. There's a lot of people just like me. I need something that's going to separate me and make me different. So I decided to also pursue writing uh, as much as I could and learn as much as I could about that. I uh, created a small production company when I moved down here after I graduated college and um, got my master's. And uh, created a small production company here, got back into acting. Um, a lot of what we do locally in Orlando is commercials. We have with theme parks and all of the different companies that are down here, plus the good weather in the winter, uh, we get a lot of commercials. So I've done about four dozen. Um, some of which I've seen, some of which I've never seen. Sometimes I'm surprised to see myself on a random TV, just walking, you know, somewhere. Uh, or someone will send me a screen capture of, oh, I saw you on my TV. Um, and done some shows. And then I, um, a lot of that's happening concurrently with working here. Um, and so while I'm here, I am participating in our projects that we've got going on here. Sometimes there's alumni projects, sometimes there's faculty projects, and then also, continuing on with the, the work as an actor locally here. I also write in my spare time, whatever spare time I have left, um, and I'm working on a novel series at the moment. Do you ever sleep? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't really ever sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you're very, very busy. And how long have you been at Full Sail? Uh, it will be 12 years this year. Wow, and time flies, right? It's crazy. Yeah. Georg, you get to go next, um, and just for our audience to know, Georg and Alan are in the same shot because they're actually working on a collaborative project together, that, which they'll share with, more with you uh, in a few minutes. But Georg, tell us a little bit about your background and your experience. Sure, thanks, Heather. Yeah, I, I graduated from, uh, from film school uh, in Germany with a master's and then went to LA, uh, where I started making documentaries and was lucky enough to sell the first one, a feature I did uh, to uh, Sundance TV and um, was after that able to, uh, to have a deal with HBO to do another one. And um, that one ended up uh, on the Oscar shortlist. I got lucky. And um, with that under my belt, I went back to Europe and uh, started uh, directing and also executive producing uh, reality and documentary programs. So and um, most notably for MTV Europe and, uh, and um, Discovery International. And, uh, and then I uh, became a full-time writer. Um, and um, I, you know, I'm a veteran of you know, many writers' rooms and um, among them uh, Dogs of Berlin, of Net which is still on Netflix, and um, Deutschland 83, uh, which is on on Amazon, and um, and then I I uh, I started teaching at uh, at Full Sail like about yeah no, I just had my five year anniversary wow wonderful wow and I'm having that's a blast. great that's awesome well we'll have we're so happy to have you here and all that you share with our students um, Andrew you get to go next tell right. us a little bit about your background all right well I'm from Columbus Ohio and uh, went to graduate school in Savannah Georgia at Savannah College of Art and Design where I got my MFA. Uh, while I was there, I was making them my first feature, Johnny Appleweed, which eventually went to Hulu. And then I moved to New York, made some movies, video game, things like that. Somehow got hired by a company called B&H, which I'm sure a lot of y'all shop with, and traveled the world marketing to the government. That's all pretty much I could say on that. And then that led me to California, where I started financing my own films which led me to working with a guy named Roger Corman, where I really got to learn the system. And then eventually into the Producers Guild of America and stayed out there on a beach for a long time in Malibu. So just learning the system prior to being able to come here to Full Sail to bring my real world knowledge and then still continue to make features. Cool. And I too with Georg, we got hired like a month apart. So, oh, nice. congratulations yeah. on your uh, five year anniversary there, buddy. Yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> Same I, <time. laughs> I just celebrated 15 years. Like, we did our celebration in the live venue yesterday. And so, it's cool when you reach those milestones, right? It's like it goes by so quickly. Um, yeah. And one of the things that I love about Full Sail and just being an educator here for so many years 
is that when I started out teaching um, on campus in the digital uh, digital marketing class, um, I personally brought in a lot of collaborative projects. So I wanted to give you guys a few examples of those. Uh, we did a collaborative project with the United Nations where I took a group of students to France where they were able to work on some film projects for sustainable companies, which was really exciting. Um, we, I also did a number of uh, collaborative projects in the classroom where the students would develop marketing plans for big venues like you know, Orlando Venues, which is Amway Center, previously now the Kia Center because they just changed their name and got a new sponsorship deal. Um, but the students would actually go into the boardroom and present their marketing ideas to their marketing manager, get feedback on their projects. Um, and then one of the things that we're working on right now here at the university is we have a full sale means business pitch competition, which is available for all of our students. And it doesn't matter what degree program you're in, you guys can uh, do a pitch for an actual company. And the companies provide f feedback and actually offer scholarships in partnership with Full Sail. So you can win a scholarship if you're one of the top eight contestants that are involved in that. So I encourage all of you guys, if you're current students, to go and do a pitch and participate in that. Um, so those are just some examples. But Eric, I want to start off by allowing you to share a little bit about how Full Sail's approach to education is a little bit different, the way we have this real world, hands-on, uh, you know, project-based learning approach. And tell us a little bit about, you know, why that's important in today's academic setting. Because I know we are different in that respect compared to traditional or other universities. Absolutely. So, you know, to me, that's one of the things that attracted me to want to teach at Full Sail. Um, when I moved down here in the early 90s and I was pursuing acting, um, just like a lot of actors, uh, even to this day, you know, Full Sail is a place that you can come and, you know, hone your craft. You can work on shorts. You can be a part of that process. So I knew Ray, Full Sail was on my radar, you know, decades ago. Um, so when I came here as a, as a professor, um, I wanted to bring a lot of the real world experience that I've gained throughout my career. And I think that's imperative and very important in, uh, you know, the education system, which I don't think a lot of other universities offer it to the extent that we do here at Full Sail. Um, you know, a lot of your professors, a lot of the professors here are going to be currently working in the industry, not like, oh, I did it, but I am doing it, you know, and, and there are people that, that did it that are here too. You know, you have Grammy award winning professors here and Emmy award winning, and that's, that's insane, right? I mean, to be able to, to get that knowledge from those folks is just, you know, it's, it's amazing. So for me, you know, I'm currently in the industry. Like I said, I have my own law firm. Um, I represent a lot of kind of high name clients. I also produce and direct. So when I'm teaching my negotiation and deal making class, <laughs> not only am i saying okay theoretically speaking let's turn to page 26 of your book you know if this were to happen you were to do xyz i'm saying okay so this happened to me yesterday <laughs> you know and i'm explaining it as it's going on in real time or i might even pull up an email if it's not you know if it's something i can share with the students some things obviously you can't but in a situation where i can i'll be like look here's what's being said this is what my approach is going to be and if that to me it doesn't get any more real world than that. I mean, you are getting it as it's happening and unfolding. And I think that's very powerful. And I think that's a, an element that Full Sail brings that a lot of other universities don't, that you're literally talking to people that are currently working in the field at the moment and being able to relay that to you in real time in the classroom. That's from the professor's perspective. Mm -hmm. Now let's flip real world to the student's perspective. So from the student's perspective, not only are you theoretically reading a book, learning processes, but then we're saying, okay, go. <laughs> so you're getting that kinesthetic learning, right? The hands-on approach. It's like, look, we're putting you in action. You know, right now on this show, there's probably students working on this right now. Absolutely. Um, so they're getting a real world experience at the moment. So as I say this, there's a student sitting there going, yeah, I'm doing it right now. Right? So, <laughs> I mean, this is something that a lot of other universities don't offer that full sale does so when we say real world i think it's not only from the student's perspective of hey i'm working on a project hey there's you know there's very strategic partnerships that full sale has garnered with other companies and and people that are coming in that are utilizing our students but we too as a facility or as a, a, a university are saying look part of your grade go shoot that short film 
Part of your grade is go create that animated character. Part of your grade is go ahead and write that script. So it's not just reading, it's doing. And I think that's fantastic. So when we, when we promote that, we're not kind of stretching the truth. In fact, we're probably not saying the extent of what we're actually really doing because it's ongoing. Yeah, it is ongoing. I, I just, for example, like we had Elvis Costello come and perform here on campus a few weeks ago, which oh, was a huge treat. And there were students in the venue supporting every aspect of that show. And to be able to get that hands-on learning experience is like so invaluable. And I know it's a lot easier for some of our more technical programs where you're learning show production and film and things like that. But even in our business classes, like we look for ways to collaborate as well. So I, I know we really go above and beyond to, to support our students in that aspect. So now I would like to get into some examples because this is my favorite part of today's show. <laughs> we get to show off what we're doing. And I'm gonna start off with Alan and Georg because Alan and Georg, you guys are working on, you're in the midst of planning a new project for your students. And I would love for you to talk a little bit about that because our film production master students are actually gonna be working on this for several months, right? So over the course of a few different classes. So, Alan, can you talk a little bit about the web series portion? And then, Georg, I would love for you to talk about the writer's room. So um, go ahead and start us off, Alan. Yeah, so the, the it's a web series. Um, episodes will range from about 8 to 10 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, maybe a little bit shorter. Um, the first season is going to have eight episodes. There will be a pilot that will be filmed by the instructors. And then uh, subsequent episodes that are going to be written by and um, shot by the students in different months. And since we're month to month, it fits a, it's a production pipeline that works really well for our program. The show is called The Russell Gemstone, and it is an episodic with some serialized elements. And the pitch is, it is a quantum leap meets show. Uh, and so we follow a guy uh, who's um, it, the subject of an experiment where he jumps into a new body and a new, a new uh, essentially genre uh in every episode uh and um but it's a it's got a through line of a continuation of uh of a story that um we're still working out but um uh it, it's an it's it's a completely collaborative process where it's going to involve multiple months in our program um on the front end and pre-pro during production and then also during post-production and hopefully um we're going to create a post-production timeline that uh, will include poss the possibility of having an internship to help finish up some of these episodes. And Garrett can talk about the, the, the episodes themselves. Sure, Very cool. I mean, it's, it's super awesome. Uh, Alan created it and, uh, you know, tip my hat to him. It's awesome and we, we all love it. We love working on it. And, um, and so uh, where I come in as well, like I said, I'm a, I'm a veteran of, of uh, writer's rooms. And, um, and so I am, uh, working with a student-led writer's room now where we create you know the episodes for for the show um so first step was of course to create you know um a first draft of a show bible um also you know involving all all our students and um and now we are at a point where in my story development class um we are creating and when I say we, it's really the students. Um, I'm just there to guide them through the process. We are creating uh, all these episodes that are, you know, as Alan already touched upon, like going through all these different genres, which is super cool. I mean, we have right now, we, as we're sitting here, uh, my students, there's a big class of 16, so two writer's rooms of eight uh, students each, and they're working uh, on an episode um, that is a mixture of, um, a game show and a Spanish telenovela and glitches back and forth. I mean, it's far out. Uh, what we're doing here is really <laughs> cool and crazy. So I'm really excited about it. That's so exciting. And what's great is it allows the students to have that perspective of the work that goes into a web series, like in all different aspects, right? And uh, so exciting. And I heard through the grapevine, Alan, are you going to star in this web series? Are you an actor? I <laughs> yeah, so I am the I am the original uh, in the pilot. I am the original protagonist, and then my, I will be replaced in each episode uh, cool. until we get back to essentially the real world. Uh, but yes, I am. I, we're we're filming the pilot in March, and I will be in the pilot episode. Yes. Well, I cannot wait and to we're watch really it. Lucky I'm not in it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, it's wonderful. And I cannot wait to see how it all comes together. And what's great is all the students will actually leave with that to put as part of their demo reel. They'll have some actual footage. It's like really, really exciting stuff. So thank yes. you so much for your collaboration on that and working so hard on it. Um, Andrew, I would love for you to talk about Zombie Apache now. So this is a, a film that you took some students and graduates to go work on, right? So yes. tell us about that. Zombie Apache. Well, uh, probably the biggest movie I've done where I've had complete control over it. So that's exciting. But I took up, you know, one undergrad when well, she graduated and like six or seven graduate alumni, you know, and they were spaced out through either camera department, art department. One was my first AD and she's actually getting promoted to like a associate producer on this movie and, um, you know, grip department, things like that. So we had a, you're seeing some stills here of some of the actors. These are the frame grabs from Uncolor Corrected, of course, from uh, probably the first day of shooting. And the premise of the story is that me, um, I'm a greedy land developer and I have my son who you saw there with the gun in the previous shots go and destroy a Viking burial ground and that unleashes uh, some unholy things <laughs> to come. Uh, I know it looks like a horror film, but it's kind of a comedy, you know, throw back to like 1980s. We shot in a lot of uh, old anamorphic lenses from the 80s. And, um, you know, everybody got paid. Everybody made union rates. And, um, well, there I am right there. Uh, <laughs> and we just had a good time and people learned. And it was very good to see the students grow over a period of 17 days. Some of them had never been on features before. Some of them never done eight or nine overnights, you know, not in a row, but five in a row or six in a row, you know, sometimes. So they really got educated on that and we had a great time and we're turning out a really, really awesome movie. That is so exciting. And for them to be able to work on something like that, you know, with some well-known actors too, you've got some good actors in the Sh film. Sure. Yeah. I have um, a guy named Craig Charles, which is a pretty big dude. If you know, like um, Red Dwarf and some other shows he's been on. He's also like on BBC Radio now at this point in his career. And then also up and coming kid that you saw the sheriff in the stills. His name is Jamie Costa. And um, I believe he's in a movie he just made that just got released called Bring Him to Me, which was shot in Australia. So they're up and coming. And you may have known Jamie from the Internet where he was trying to he used to impersonate uh, Robin Williams. OK, so um, that's all I can say on that. There might be a movie coming out about that, but. Very cool. Well, I just love yeah. that you you helped make the connection, you know, through the connections you had, you helped, you know, allow our students to work on some really cool stuff, which is really wonderful. Um, and speaking of connections, <laughs> Eric, I wanted you to share a little bit about some of the projects you've been working on with some other departments. And we have some examples to show. So go ahead and if you would, could start off by talking about tonight, we'll show some images sure. there from that. So, okay. Um, this was like years in the making. Um, it's called Tonight, and what it is, and with the screenshot you see there, it's uh, basically think of um, Hollywood Insider, think of Entertainment Tonight, like a like a, a you know a show that just talks about celebrities and stuff, and this and but it's all animated, mm -hmm. right? So you get to go a little bit further. <laughs> you know, with your jokes. And, um, you know, we, we had a lot of good times doing this. And what I did was, you know, I, I met with a bunch of different uh, folks that were involved in this. And I said, you know, let's talk about Full Sail. Because at Full Sail, you know, we have a completely 100% uh, animation department. And I'm sure they'd be interested in, in, you know, getting involved in this. And with these types of shows, I mean, it takes a long time. I, if you're not involved in the animation world, it takes a long time to develop the stuff. And I'm not just talking about the story, I'm talking about like creating the characters and then you have to, to create a rigging and a 3D rigging of them and they have to, you know, it has to move correctly and there's a lot. And I'm sure people have seen it with Pixar movies and you watch back in the day when you could watch the behind the scenes on the DVD specials and it just would take a long time. So for us, you know, it didn't, it wasn't something that just was a month for the students. I mean, these students were involved in them, some of them, were involved where they were students here, then they graduated and they were still working on the project as alumni. Oh, 
because it took you know quite a while to to, to develop that. And with some of the screenshots that you're seeing, um, the two main characters uh, that were together in the shot, I can't tell you who they are because uh, NDA purposes right now. But I will say that they're very famous people that you would definitely know who they are. Now the second shot of the the, the blonde character. She actually, um, we had some local auditions here, and um, she actually is Tracy Wu, who, ironically enough, and the producers of this did not know, um, they just heard her voice, right, when she auditioned, she actually works at Full Sail. So she ended up uh, being She she was also on the Mickey Mouse Club back in the day. Did you know that? Little known fact, she was on the Mickey Mouse Club, and she's a Full Sail graduate. She graduated from our business intelligence program, so... She's famous at Full Sail and famous outside of Full Sail. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> yeah, sure. so she's, she's great. Um, and then the, the one of the last uh, screen captures that I took is, um, you saw it there for a second, we'll bring it up again. It's the Simpsons and King of the Hill. There's a little shot there. So one of the uh, executive producers on this show is a fellow by the name of Jay Fatuko, who was the uh, executive producer of the Simpsons and King of the Hill. So in the little sizzle reel, you know, when the voiceover happens, it says brought to you by the executive producer. So that's him. And what's really cool about this little tidbit of the story is Jay was so enamored about Full Sail and how our approach to education is. And he's out in Los Angeles, by the way, that he talked to the powers that be here at Full Sail and ended up now he's a professor at the L.A. Film School, which is our sister school out in Los Angeles. So he got so excited about working with us here that he wanted to teach. And now he is, he's an instructor out there, which I think is awesome. Right? And it just goes to show you that, you know, these collaborations don't also benefit the students, but they also benefit the people that are coming in. And then eventually as a full circle benefits us because now we have his abilities and his knowledge and he's passing it on to, um, you know, our group, our family of, of schools. Okay. So that's, that's that show called Tonight. And that's being shopped around currently and we'll, that is wood that I'm knocking on. Hopefully uh, get something to happen to that very shortly. Now, the next one that I brought to Full Sail is a show called Respace. And Respace, um, and I can't get into it too deeply because it too is being shopped right now. All this stuff has happened in the last year or two. Um, this is hosted by a lady named Paige Davis. Paige Davis, if uh, you're unfamiliar with her, was very famous from a show that she did years ago called Trading Spaces. So we brought her in and she happens to be a friend of uh, uh, somebody else that works here in the career development department. So it's all very, you know, circular and how we work. So this shot that you see here is on one of our sound stages here at Full Sail. Um, You have the volume screen behind you. And those people that are in the foreground behind the cameras are all full sale students. And there's Paige. And basically what it is, conceptually, I can tell you this much. Instead of going in and, and literally like destroying somebody's house to redesign it, mm-hmm. first they go in and they take a 3D capture of the house and then project it on the screen. And then she shows them potentially what could happen. And that's in our virtual production studio, right? Where it's, it that looks like correct. she's actually in the space as if she were in the home, but it's all virtual, yes. which is so interesting. Okay, cool. And the homeowners would come in there and you'd see what it used to look like. And then she'd just in a wave of a hand go, okay, then we're gonna switch and we'll move this and knock this wall down. And it happens in real time behind them. So they actually see the change to their house, but not, uh, not but physically. But not having to spend uh, $150,000 to have it remodeled. <laughs> so, Correct, yes. That's exciting. So that's an exciting thing. And it was really cool to be able to collaborate uh, with Full Sail and with these producers. As I said, on the other project, um, you know, we had Jay Fatuko as one of the, the producers. Now, on this project, there's some of the same people that are on tonight are on this project as well. And I'd like to mention them because they're pretty powerful people in the industry and it's exciting to be able to bring them here. Um, there's a, a gentleman by the name of David McCullough. And I encourage you when you hear these names, anybody wants to pull them up and check them out because these people are amazing. So David McCullough is a multi Emmy award winning uh, executive producer. He was the head and ran the Discovery Channel. He cool. ran the History Channel. He ran A&E. OK, this guy has run. He was the C, like basically the general manager, CEO of all these companies. And uh, he he's discovered and started uh, uh, Duck Dynasty. Pawn Stars, uh, American Choppers, 
um i mean you name it the list he is like the guru of reality television in the united states mm -hmm. and has won multiple awards and he too now loves full sale and wants to get involved somehow wants to fly down he's up in the northeast wants to fly down and do some guest lecturing so we're working all that out so i guess what i'm trying to say here is everybody that i brought here has fell in love with the way that Full Sail acts and interacts with everybody that they want to be a part of it. They're like, look, I don't want to just be a third party <laughs> vendor, and come in and do a show and then get out. I, I'd like to, how do I integrate myself into your system? And I, I think that's awesome. Yeah. And it's, it's been really a exciting. pleasure to be able to work with these folks. Now this last project, um, we just finished this and we're able to show the entire uh, sizzle of this. This is called Flight of the Emu. And basically it is going to be a full length animated movie. And mm -hmm. it's written by a gentleman by the name of Rowdy Harrington. Rowdy Harrington, um, he directed the first, the original Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze. Uh, he also directed Striking Distance with Bruce Willis. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's done, he did uh, Bagger Vance with um, uh, uh, Jim Caviezel. So he's done, he has quite a pedigree. Uh, it's also produced by a gentleman by the name of Kim Dawson. Kim Dawson was the producer of all the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies. Cool. And he too has got excited and got enamored to, to be a part of Full Sail. And he's out of Orlando. He sits on one of our boards now uh, for entertainment business and helps us, you know, make sure that uh, the curriculum wise is focusing on what's going on in the real world, which I think is also a thing we didn't mention before about real world. We bring in actual industry people to sit on right. our boards to help us develop, which I think is a fantastic thing. I don't know any other university that does it to the degree mm -hmm. we do, which is great. So he's involved. It is directed by a gentleman by the name of, oh, oh, I'll stop for a second. <laughs> Got it? Yeah, great, Boz. Print it. Let's move on to the sizzle. Where's our wombat? Yes. Wowza. <laughs> Y'all take that. Ah, right Wowza. Oh, look at me. Oh, yes. This game is deluxe, Boz. Wowza, we have to shoot the promo now. Too right. Want me to sing the song now? Never ends, friends. No, not the songs. We had to tell the people about the movie. Fair digger, mate. Oh, the part where the egg gets stolen by the flying fox and he drops it in the river and goes over the falls in a near side of platypus, puts it in the crane nest, and little balls pops out of the egg, much to their mortification. Well, maybe. And then M Day comes and the cranes have to migrate and you can't fly. And so you go on walk about to find your rallies and that's when I save you. What's going on? I'll save her too. I save you, you mongrel. I'll save you first. He's off his low. On right is rain. <laughs> Oops. How rare. Shouldn't have entered snails. Guys, quit farting around. We need to shoot the promo. Right, boss. Never ends, friends. Oh, sorry. That is very cool. And here we see the credits and all of these are full cell students, <laughs> which is great. With the exception of, you know, Rowdy Harrington, which Eric mentioned, and some of the other people that were working on it that came, brought this project to, to full cell. So everything from animation to sound and post-production, all of that was done by full cell students, which is really cool. So, Eric, I want to... Oh, go yeah, ahead. What's cool about that, and I didn't get to mention, I do have to mention his name. Barry Cook mm -hmm. is, is directed this. Barry Cook is the, the guy who directed the animated version of Mulan. Oh, wow. So he's also Very exciting. here. And we were also, what, what we also did was uh, all those voices are local talent. And we were able to come into the uh, recording studios here at Full Sail and record their voices. Mm -hmm. And Rowdy and uh, Barry was here on site with Kim. Rowdy was via Zoom. So we were able to, to capture that. And that just goes to show you the technology that we also have here at Full Sail. We were able to bring Rowdy into Everybody the studio there. with us, uh, even though he lives in Montana, and was able to direct, help direct the, the, the voice talent. So It's very yeah, exciting cool. stuff. And we, you know, Eric, I appreciate you so much that you would bring these opportunities to, to Full Sail through your connections, which is really good.
Oh, so. absolutely. And, you know, a uh, world of thanks goes out to Pete Banster too, uh -huh. uh, because he was all those animated projects. I mean, he was over all of them. So not only was he teaching classes, but then he also had to take the time to meet with each of these students, work on the assets that they were bringing to the table. Sure. That little short that you just saw there was entirely 100% full cell students. Yeah, that's 100%. so great. I love it. Yeah. So I want to go to you now, Alan, I want to ask you a little bit about like, what are some of the key benefits involved of students like actually working on some of these real world projects and, um, you know, not just for the students, but also for industry partners as well. Do you have any, uh, any thoughts on the benefits? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of what Eric was saying. It, it touches on um, what they're going to be experiencing out in the industry. I think the number one thing that I hear from graduates from our program specifically is they know what it's like to be on a, on a film set. Our mm -hmm. film sets operate just like they would encounter out in the industry. Um, our process is exactly what they would encounter out in the industry. And so they feel very well prepared to, to just go right on, walk right onto a film set and start working immediately if they, if that opportunity is presented to them. Um, so it's just that the simulation of exactly what they're going to be experiencing out in the real world um, is exactly what we try to, to, to provide for them here. Um, and then, you know, the industry is constantly changing. So when there's something going on in the industry or there's a new trend or there's a new uh, piece of technology or a new approach, um, you know, we bring that right in immediately. That's immediately added to our class curriculum and, and we try to implement that as much as we can here. Yeah, that's great. Andrew, you were actually working on set with some grads and some, you know, tell us about the mentorship aspect, um, what it's like to be in that environment where the industry People are like really showing them a new perspective. Can you talk a little bit to that? Sure. Uh, I, you know, when when we're mentoring them, we're at least me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm letting them know whether they're doing something right or not. But when I, if they do something wrong, then I don't necessarily yell at them. Like maybe you might get yelled at on a set or your first set because you don't know. I, I tell them like, hey, this is this is what you did. Let's fix it this way, and this is why we need to fix it. But also seeing, you know, I've made four features since I've been here in the five years, well, probably more than that, probably six, but, but I've actually really, really produced. Um, that the, and having the alumni on there and seeing them grow from one movie to another movie and then seeing them actually starting to make their own movies and then coming to me and being like, hey, do you think the, the people you introduce us to in L.A., you know, can – you know, very much like Eric's doing. It's like, you know, you're, you're introducing them to people and they're giving them knowledge and they're helping them out in the sound, the post sound department, camera stuff, maybe at rental houses or getting them on uh, other jobs and things like that. So, so mentoring these kids and seeing them actually starting to do their own projects, that, that, that's what I guess is rewarding for me. That's great. So Georg, I would love to hear from you. I mean, you're right in the midst right now of collaborating with Alan on launching this web series, right? And I know that, that it, there's a lot of moving parts. So when it comes to collaborating with multiple classes, multiple instructors, putting a script together, like tell me about some of the challenges that come with all of that. Because I know it's not easy. I know like it, if you walked into a classroom, just taught a lecture every day and went through the motions, it'd be very different than allowing them to work on a project because working on a project requires collaboration on many, many different levels. Talk to me a little bit about some of the challenges that you face throughout that. Yeah, there are no challenges at all. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, it's a cakewalk. Actually, in fact, the, 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 biggest, the biggest challenge um, I, I feel um, we are having is to establish uh, a workflow. Um, because what we're actually doing is we're doing the same as, you know, starting up a, a, a show, a serial, a mini series, anything. Uh, so we have to establish all, all those, uh, those workflows. And, um, and that is how we're also where the other, um, you know, where, where every department comes in, but also where every instructor, every professor with their own um, specialties comes in, you know, we have, uh, we have an excellent cinematographer. We have a director. You know, we have someone who can also, you know, mentor our actors. And it's the creator of this show, Alan, right next to me. So, so that is absolutely wonderful. But just one more thing, I also wanted to 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 add to what what uh, was said before about 
um, you know, the benefit for us, you know, working professionals um, who are teaching here. Well, I mean, what's really awesome is that I get inspired by my students oh. for my own creative work. I mean, I really, really, really get all that energy uh, from working with my students, you know, the, the giving back to them, but also they're giving to me. They're giving oh, me so absolutely. much. They're giving me energy. And, and, and I put that into, um, you know, my own uh, uh, projects. I'm in the middle of, um, you know, uh, writing a, a feature in the $10 million range for director Tilla Russell, wow. um, whose last feature, Silk Road, uh, went to Lionsgate. He also has a Netflix deal. So, so that is um, uh, something that keeps me busy besides, you know, full sale. And I'll work on, on this project, Russell Gemstone. And I re really need all the emotional help I can get. And that's mm -hmm. also where my students come in. But also when we are actually start, you know, shooting it, which of course takes a while, as you guys know, um, I will follow my buddy um, Andrew Bird's lead and, you know, make sure that we will employ, you know, um, also recent grads on that oh, shoot. That's wonderful. I, you know, I'm going to piggyback off of what you said, Georg, because that really like hit me in the heart <laughs> when I think about the value that working with my students has brought to me through doing these real world experiences. And then by being an instructor that offers an opportunity like that to them, they don't forget you. <laughs> they, they remember you and they stay in touch with you. And so by staying connected with our students, it allows us to live vicariously through them after graduation. And then when they go on and do great things, we feel like we had maybe a little part of that. So, um, so I would like each of you to comment a little bit on that. Cause we were talking about that right before this started, Andrew, um, you know, Andrew, what is like the most rewarding part of your job when it comes to doing these type of projects with students, seeing the light bulb go off, you know, mm -hmm. seeing like what we stress in the, you know, 11, 12 classes that we, we teach and seeing them being on set and then just, you know, as a producer, I can watch from afar. So. Mm -hmm. I see them figure stuff out and that's pretty rewarding. That's like, all right, cool. We're a part of that, you know, yeah, that's you know, awesome. that's good. And, and, and to know that they know that we have their back mm -hmm. where it's like, you're on like a big time shoot. So we obviously have faith in you. And I think that that makes them feel good and feel part of a team. And then mm -hmm. we can give them like a, a, a bump up in their career, sure. you know, because they have like a, a credit that is actually going to be on TV or some sort of streaming service. Starting to build that IMDB profile. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's really exciting. How about you, Alan? Any thoughts for you about, um, you know, how, how these, uh, an approach like this really kind of like fuels you as an instructor? Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a great joy. I mean, it just happened yesterday. We were going through an episode that the, the class is filming next month. And we were trying to simplify the script a little bit because it was a little on the ambitious side. And I literally plugged in my computer and had it up on the TV. And we had all of the department heads for students, student department heads. Um, we went through and we just went scene by scene, talked about the dramatic function of each scene and then um, changed dialogue and simplified the blocking. And we were you know, getting up and like, OK, if we punch here, how can we film that? Uh, changing lines of dialogue and just laughing the whole time because you're like, oh, that's really funny. Um, and just having an enjoyable time doing it. But um, th another thing is just the idea, like I run the casting, um, I coordinate the casting for our program. So I'm in the room a lot of the times when they've got their thesis idea and it's, you know, a script and then they sit down and they start auditioning actors and they have actors come in and say their lines. And then the actors are really good and you can see it click in their head. Like that's my person. That is, that is this character. That's what I'm going to cast. And that's really rewarding because you really start to see them get excited about their own project where it was just something that was in their mind before. Now it's actually real. And that's awesome. That is awesome. That's awesome. We're about to go to a Q and a, but I want to give Eric the opportunity to, to share um, how he feels about offering these experiences to students. I, I, to me, it's just an amazing uh, situation to be able to impart what I've learned to other people, right? Pay it forward, as they say. Um, one of the reasons I became an entertainment attorney is because I was got bamboozled in a deal. And I literally went to law school saying to myself, I'm never going to let this happen to myself. And I'm never going to let it happen to anyone I know again. So to be able to bring that into the classroom and to help 
these students as they're beginning their career to not hit those pitfalls that I might've hit, man, that's, that's super rewarding, right? To be able to make sure that they can sidestep some things. You know, we say in life, hey, it's the trials and tribulations of your life that create you, right? But some of them you can avoid and still be good. <laughs> Avoiding a five-year lawsuit, I don't think you need to go through that process to be <laughs> successful in your career. So if I can teach somebody that, you know, I always tell students, I'm like, look, you're very passionate about what you do. This is a very creative uh, field. However, it's called the entertainment business, not the entertainment fun time. And there's a capital B in that word business. And you have to understand both aspects of it. So as much as I want you to be creative and grow creatively, I really want you to understand the aspect of business. And also how important is networking in our field? You can be fantastic and unbelievably creative in your in what you do but if you don't know how to network you can't get yourself out there which is why in my class we have this thing called link up which we've now created and uh is right going on as we speak it's going on right now and 3b <laughs> in the auditorium and i think that that networking and being able to provide that to the students which is outside the classroom right mm -hmm. so my reward is also being able to offer stuff outside the classroom like link up which teaches students how to network and express themselves and do that elevator pitch within a minute or two to be able to express what they're doing and to be able to meet new people outside because sometimes you're in such a cohort and you're only here so much you don't get to see all the other students and all the other degree programs to maybe create some synergistic relationships right so like georg and, and alan and andrew i'll tell the students right now you guys hit me up. You need me. I'm there for you. See, I'm going to create relationships with these guys and they know that they can come to me. And if I have an idea, I'm going to go to them. We're just meeting for the first time. Full sale is a huge place. It's not a small little place. We might think it is because it's so compartmentalized sometimes, but I mean, to, to hear these gentlemen and, and, and speak on what they're doing, I'm like, I'm already starting to think of ideas of how I can collaborate with them. Mm -hmm. And so networking is outside the classroom and it's super important. And I think that's another aspect that's very rewarding to me that we bring to the students. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And speaking of that, you know, we're ready to go to the Q&A portion. So if you are joining us from a live stream, I'd encourage you to share any questions that you have. And I'm sure that Alan and Georg and Andrew and, and Eric will be able to share with you. But the first question that comes up here is this is from an audio production major, an online student at that. OK. So how can I collaborate as an online audio production major? I really want to get as involved as possible and make the most of our full cell experience. Um, you know, I'm going to speak to that because I know you guys are in online or on campus programs, mm -hmm. right? And I know um, our online students really do have a challenge sometimes with connecting to the student the same way they're or the immersive experience they have in um, in our campus version, but. You know, Link Up, the the uh, networking organization that Eric just mentioned, is actually available to online students in every different degree program. So, if you wanted to get involved and connect and collaborate with other students who are, you know, in different degree programs, maybe as an audio production student, you want to collaborate with someone in recording arts, or you might want to collaborate with even somebody in the game design program to add audio to a game. Um, you can certainly use avenues like that to connect with other full sale students. And I earned, encourage you to get as involved as you possibly can, because those connections will certainly allow you to do more collaborative stuff. Um, so for the second question here, I'm a graduate who's been working in the industry for over a decade and have recently considered teaching. Did you experience any unexpected challenges while transitioning from the India industry into education? And I'm going to turn to Andrew, about this, because we were just talking about this, right? Sure. So, and I'll, I'll, I'll allow the rest of our panelists to also weigh in on this, but tell me, Andrew. <laughs> oh, I, I, I was thinking what my main problem was when I first started teaching. It was like just learning the the, the software mm -hmm. that y'all have here on campus and all the different areas of like grading. And, you know, it seems like there was something <laughs> to me that was a little di difficult. Mm -hmm. And then learning that realizing that I, I know a lot more mm -hmm. than the students. So, so to be able to maybe compress it or make it more simpler and, and then taking more, having more patience as opposed to coming from being on set all the time where you expect things to be done quickly and professionally all the time, you have to learn how to step back and realize that 
I was here. I remember, like, I was here at, a, at, you know, in graduate school somewhere. So just, just to being more patient and realizing that you're not on a set all the time, being the, the drill sergeant as a producer, you're now the person everyone's looking up to, and you have to give them the knowledge in a way that is, you know, um, conducive to the different learning styles, mm -hmm. which, which is also something that I realized there were multiple learning styles that I had to get used to. Yeah, it's interesting making the jump from the corporate or industry realm into education because it's a completely different animal. <laughs> like, um, but now that I've worked in education as long as I've had, I mean, I enjoy different aspects of working pe with people in the industry, but I also really value the education world, and I don't think I'd ever want to make the leap back. Uh, like full time into a corporate environment. No. <laughs> so um, it's just much more rewarding. So this next question here, um, I'm located in LA. This one's for you, Gary. Gary, I'm gonna ask, because I know you're very familiar with the LA area. Um, and I can also speak to the question here about LA Film School, but are there any opportunities to collaborate as a student out in LA? I've heard it mentioned that the LA Film School is a sister school of Full Sail, and that's absolutely true. Um, LA Film School is a sister school. And I would say that we do have connections to people out there at LA Film School. So if there's somebody that we could introduce you to, um, we'd be more than happy to do that for you as a student. But Georg, do you have any recommendations about networking, not just with LA Film School students, but maybe with any type of industry people out in LA? Yeah, that my, my main advice to uh, young up and coming filmmakers is to put yourself out there. Uh, it's not going to happen if you don't leave your house. You can be like the most fantastic, talented writer. Uh, you know, if you don't go and mingle, uh, you know, nothing will will come uh, your way. So so that is the, you know, uh, the, the big uh, uh, lesson. Also, um, be nice to everybody and involve, get involved in as many projects as, as possible. You don't know what's going to happen to those people. Here's an example. In 1999, <laughs> I, um, a friend of mine who's a DP uh, asked me, hey, uh, are you doing anything this weekend? I need someone to dolly grip for me because you know, I'm shooting this music video for this Austrian young director. And I thought, but there's no pay, but we'll have fun. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, sure, let's do it. So I did. And um, afterwards, I had a few beer with that uh, director. And guess what? Like in 2000... 15, he hired me as a writer on Dogs of Berlin on Netflix because by now he'd become a big producer over there. So you never know where people are going to go. And um, so just put yourself out there. That is my main advice, you know, work on student films, work on, do uh, unpaid work, you know, have a, you know, of course, a job to support yourself, but um, do as much shooting as you possibly can. Set time is never wasted time. That's great advice. And sometimes working on those unpaid projects can lead to paid projects. So Absolutely. it's better to say, stay busy than to not do anything and just like wait for something to show up, right? Um, I'm gonna direct this next question towards you, Alan. When you're filling out your film crew for projects, what are the standout features or skills that you're looking for? Uh, I, I, I could probably speak for everybody here, which is um, hard work. Hard work and, and I say this, every month in our in my class be somebody that people want to work with um be have a good attitude be motivated and want to do well on the project um all of that goes a long way and even if you don't think people are observing that or you think you're fading into the background somehow everyone's observing everything you know if you are a go-getter you will stand out and we will remember that um, I know I, I just see people's work ethic all the time, every day. And there are those who are just, they come in and they're ready to go and they have great ideas and they're enthusiastic. And yeah, they may just be a PA that at that moment, but they might go on to do wonderful, huge things. Um, we have had some graduates who, um, when they came through our program were really, really motivated really paid attention that were great to be around and then we would put them on outside projects and now they're working in the industry and doing huge things just right out the gate and i think that that's fantastic it's, it all comes down to the motivation the hard work 
and um, the, the collaboration with, with everybody. So be somebody that yeah. people want to be around. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. yeah. That's really, really great advice. That's wonderful. Um, the next question here I'm going to direct towards Eric because you seem to have the most experience working with animated stuff here. So what's the biggest challenges that you face when producing animated versus live action film? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, okay, so with live action, right, a lot of times, well, a lot of times most things are practical, not so much today, but, you know, on the set, everything's practical. So I'm shooting and if I want to move a chair, I can move a chair and I just pick it up and move it. In animation, if I say, I want, no, nah, I don't want the chair there, I want to move it over there. Well, that's not something that is like, okay, let's just do it right now. It takes a little bit of time. So I think that, um, I think Alan said this, um, no, Andrew said it. One of you guys said it, and maybe we all said it because we all agree, patience. Um, <laughs> I think it was you, Andrew. Uh, patience is is definitely something that I've learned uh, working with animation because it's so much more technical and it takes a lot more time. And as much as film is collaborative, and it is, animation is even more collaborative because you might have somebody that's just doing this. And that's their job, right? And then you have somebody who's like, well, the hair doesn't look right. So that's a different person entirely. So there might be five people working on one character, right? So, and, and obviously lots of different personalities, lots of different, uh, you know, way people work. So it is, is about patience. So for me, I think the biggest difference that I see um, between animation and, and live action is the time. Yeah, I can understand And that, that you sure. really cannot be, look, and we all know this, Alan at coming saying, you know, you're as much of an actor as I am, you know, years and years of this in animation, you can't improv mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like the voice actor could potentially, but I mean, you're pretty much locked in. Like when, when you're doing an animate, you know, the amount of time it's going to take to create that scene. You can't just have somebody wing it. Now we have the famous thing of, of Robin Williams when he did Aladdin, um, you know, but they let him riff and then they would choose what they were going to use with him and then animate it. Right. So it wasn't, you know, there's different ways to animate. And I think with somebody who's like Rob Williams style and they're improving like crazy. Oh my gosh, that could be a nightmare <laughs> for an animated animation team. So, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's a little more about really need to know as the director, what you're going to do a B to C and, and you can't leave it up to the actors to improv a scene because you really got to lock that in. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Absolutely. It had to be planned out for sure. Um, so this next question, I really kind of want to direct towards anybody who wants to take it because I know that you all have different perspectives on it. Um, can we talk a little bit about the business side of film? Are there any recommendations on project funding or contracts for indie filmmakers? Any takers on this one? I'll get everything in first. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. Like like how, everything big, how big the budget is, you know? going to need a lawyer for my budget. <laughs> exactly there you go we're gonna need eric yeah, if the budget gets about a million bucks and above uh-huh right you want to you want to make put sure on that... my legal hat here and say when you're looking for funding i mean obviously what's really important is as much as we love to say handshakes are great i will tell you everything must be in writing everything must be spelled out everything must every i dotted every t crossed and it's got to be buttoned up, right? Because I, and I deal with a lot of people that come to me that are like, Hey, you know, I, I got this guy said, he's going to give me a hundred grand. I'm like, did do we have proof of funds? Show me because right anybody is going to say anything to you. I, I want to see it. Right. And yeah, show me the money. <laughs> let, when, when's the payout? When are you going to pay it? I mean, there are so many steps to that process. When you, when we get into the funding of projects, it, you, I, look, I'm not saying this because I'm an attorney. I'll let the other guys say that, but I will highly suggest that you get somebody with a legal mind and an attorney involved in your process. And when you're doing your budgeting, make sure you budget and allocate enough money to get legal involved. I see some budgets that they don't even have any money allocated to legal. I'm right. like, what? What? You know? <laughs> And, and in marketing, like a lot of times I'll get students or even people that not even students, people that are coming to me and I'll say, let's go over your budget. And there's no line item for marketing. 
Mm. And I'm like, well, who's going to do the marketing? Go to the distributor. I go, no, they won't. I said, I'm going to cap their P&A, which is the prints and advertising, because they will charge you things that they're not really doing for you. You might be in a list, a slate of their projects and your name is on one sheet. Well, they're going to charge you for that sheet. Right. And you're just here. Right. So yeah. I would say legally, man, you got to button things up. You got to hire a lawyer. <laughs> That's hire it. A lawyer. I, I might agree with Eric. Yeah. And, and look, you we don't know everything. That. Film's collaborative. We don't yeah. know everything. If you are a, a young filmmaker and you're a producer and you think you can do it all yourself, good luck to you. Hats off. Yeah. But yeah. um, I would say get other people involved that are good at their position, right? We heard, you heard Alan say that, you know, when you ask how you cast, I'm looking for people that not only are determined and are highly energetic, but they're good at what they do. I can't be, do everything for everybody. Right. Make sure yeah, you people put your face in and, a... and, and collaborate with other people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Look at, look at Alan and Georg right there. They trust each other. They're collaborating <laughs> with each other. He goes, Hey, speak to this. And it's the same project. You speak to that. That's what you do. Well, you speak yeah. to that. You need that. You need yeah. that ability to, to be able to collaborate and trust other people. Yeah. That's really great right. advice. And we're coming up on time here. So we're actually down to our last question. So I'm going to allow all of you to have a little bit of a say in this and any last words that you want to have before we close out today's session. Uh, but now that so many people are working remotely, do you feel that collaboration has improved? And how do you think that it will impact future productions? So, Alan, would you like to start us off? Um, I think it can be helpful to... Nothing's going to replace being with somebody in person. I always True. feel like we're most productive True. when we are sitting right in front of each other talking. Sometimes you can't because someone's out of town or someone's working on a project, but they can kind of still come in remotely. That still works, but there's nothing more that like having, there's nothing better than having us sit like literally face to face and talk it out. Mm -hmm. um, body language, et cetera. I think all of that's, that's really, really important. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's where um, co the collaboration feels the most um, uh, fertile. And um, there is a time and place for, you know, like we, we just have to resort to being on Zoom today for whatever reason, or um, we just have to make the phone call. But I think there's no substitute for the actual in-person aspect of it. Um, and uh, granted, I love to just sit on my couch and just type things out and that that's easy. But um, one of the things I've learned in the past like five or 10 years is that life needs to be challenging to grow. Mm -hmm. And the challenge of getting up and dealing with different personalities it makes you stronger. It makes your projects better. You need that mm -hmm. little bit of resistance to be able to push through and find the best viable route for your project and the story that you're trying to tell. Yeah, agree. And uh, and still, you know, like the world is getting smaller. You know, mm -hmm. um, what what you what you're saying, of course, Alan is absolutely right. You know, there's no substitute for getting to know someone. You know, one on one. Um, and um, but but then once this this connection is established, you know. Now we live in a world but after COVID where also, you know, once the trust is there uh, mm -hmm. and you know how you work together, you can be in remote places. You know, I have a very good friend who moved from LA where, you know, he's doing really, really well to New Mexico and he's still doing really, really well. Yes, he also racks up a lot of uh, frequent flyer miles going back to LA, <laughs> and, you know, because once in a while you just have to sit there, you know, you can't pitch to Paramount, you know, by sitting on your ranch in New Mexico. You have to actually go there. Right. But yeah, I think it's it's becoming a little more, you know, commonplace. Uh, people, because of the horrible experience, COVID experience, um, we all had to get accustomed to it. And so people are used to that, um, you know, also Zoom meetings. And, you know, I've, I've pitched uh, a few weeks ago, you know, um, to, to um, head of, uh, of uh, comedy development at ABC on, uh, uh, you know, sitting on my computer at home. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, it's possible. Yeah, absolutely. I think there, it depends on the environment and what project you're working on. There's certain things that cannot be done virtually. And then there's other things that allow us to collaborate in a much more, you know, easy way. So with that being said, we're going to wrap up today's session. Is there, I'm going to allow you guys to each give one one, you know, one or two sentences of a last bit of advice for any people who are potential filmmakers or students who are about to graduate. So, Andrew, do you have any advice? Yes. Okay. Be persistent. Oh, that's Show up advice. on time. <laughs> and uh, just be nice. 
That's awesome. Very good advice. Eric, how about you? Have a plan. Okay. Uh, be excited. Don't let uh, others failures deter you. Don't let people who are scared and ask you what's your backup plan to deter you. Stay focused, stay the course, know that this is your passion. This is what you want and nobody can stop you but you. I love that. I love it. How about you, Georg? I think um, my one more thing that I would like to say is um, don't don't believe in statistics. Don't believe in numbers. They're for other people. Uh, you can do it. You know, it's 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 just up to you. You know, there's yeah, there's thousands of people like leaving film schools all over the country. But, you know, you're going to be the one who, who's going to make a big impact. You just got to be convinced. And with that excitement, go out there and create. Just make films, make films. I mean, you can now make a film here with this, like, you know, with your phone. You know, you can shoot a movie on this. I mean, go and do it. That's great. And Alan, we get to finish with you. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Uh, I, I think it's, it's, uh, I think it's set a goal, have an idea of where you're going, have an idea of what you want, but be open to the things that, the possibilities that happen on the way, because that's where the real magic happens. I love it. All great advice from wonderful instructors who I admire very, very much. So I want to thank all of you guys for being here. Thank you, Georg, Alan, Eric, and Andrew. I'm so proud of what you bring to Full Sail and to our students. And I just can't wait to see what else we get to see our, our students and grads do. So I hope everybody enjoys the rest of the, their day. And thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Taking Flight.